beautiful pretty boys me once again <laughs> with another episode. Yay! <laughs> so, we did speak about last time about Noah, uh, the uh, the watchers in the Book of Enoch, uh, the the names of their leaders and their quest, basically for uh, destroying everything. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, there is no way to, um, uh, you know, to walk around that. And um, before we go into the Genesis six uh, canonical, I was thinking that we can read because we did read, uh, you know, Jasher and Jubilees. Why not reading the Dead Sea Scrolls? Yes, you heard me right. I even went to fetch you the Dead Sea, the Dead sea Scrolls, because I did read them a few years ago, and you will be like, what? 800 pages of fragments and commentaries? Yes. You heard me right. I did. Um, <laughs> I am not playing about this Bible thing. I don't. Uh, I don't play. So... I was thinking it would be great to then read some of those fragments because not many people really um, have the courage or or just the time to really go through those uh, texts and I, I do have the time so why not I can share it with you they are available for you to buy on Amazon or online resources so you have no excuses they are the knowledge is out there for you to reach, to read, to research, all of that. There is also, um, because there are three books of Enoch, right? We did, uh, we read uh, some fragments of Enoch 1, right? Um, then there is also Enoch 2 about the war in, in heaven. Basically, when Satan tries to overthrow Yahweh and then is sent away but, and all of that. And there's also Enoch 3, which is the last one. I was thinking, I don't know if I want to add um, Heaven's War in this episode. I think I'm just going to do an episode only on Enoch separately. So we can just go into uh, cosmology and... Um, the basically more than cosmology as we did before is mostly like how the world functions on a daily basis it's not creation but how uh, um, the stars moves and how the sun moves that we did a little bit previously but we'll go more in details and we can talk more about um Enoch in heaven because we will read at some point how Enoch ascends to heaven and that the Methuselah will be his um, successor to govern on 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 the, on basically the uh, good branch of mankind, uh, but that was for the purpose of understanding uh, the uh, family tree of Noah, his wife, his sons, and all of that. So it was more instrumental to understand the um, kinship and relationships. Uh, among the um, central characters of the story, that they're all very closely related. So for this part, I'll then read the, the fragments of different um, Dead Sea Scrolls. And just for those who don't know what Dead Sea Scrolls are, are, uh, are basically fragments that were found in the caves of Qumran, in the 20th century, they were found by a shepherd. Uh, and those are very important because the, they iterate and they confirm the information that they were shared in apocryphal books. And they also add, um, they shed some lights on things they really might have been, in, um, you know, uncertain before. And they're available for to anyone who wants to read them. I also add screenshots here. So we will start from the fragments coming from the Book of Enoch. That is number four Q, 
201 to 202, uh, 204 until 212, uh, right? So those are the codes for those who are, uh, you know, wanting to know the codes. So it's 4Q201 and basically until 212. Basically, there are some who are missing or so, yeah. And these are the names of their chiefs. Semyaza, who was their head? Aratok, his second. Ramatel, third him. Kokaber, fourth of him. Um, fifth to him, Ramael. Sixth to him, Daniel. Seventh to him, Zikiel. Eighth to him, Barakel. Ninth to him, Azael. Tenth to him, Armoni. Eleventh, eleventh to him, Matatarel. Twelfth to him, Ananel. Thirteenth to him, Stawel. Fourteenth uh, to him, Shamashel. Fifteenth to him, Shashriel. Sixteenth to him, Tumiel. Seventeenth to him, Turiel. Eighteenth to him, Humiel. Nineteenth to him, Yedayel. Twentieth to him. These are the chiefs of the chiefs of tens. These and their chiefs took for themselves wives from all those who they chose, and they began to go in them and defile themselves with them and to teach them sorcery and magic and they became pregnant by them and bore giants <coughs> so we did explain uh, this because we read it in jasher and in also in the book of enoch the the basically the one that we read this is a fragment of the same or similar text uh, that was copied uh, three three thousand years ago, but you know, the the um, they never agree on uh, the dating of those scriptures. But it, for me, it's not very central because they all are describing the same uh, event very clearly. Genesis six describes it. We will see it. Um, J Book of Jasher, Book of Jubilee. Uh, all of the all of the genesis of the uh, Tanakh confirms it so there is no questions about it and then a lot of people they say how can then women you know during labor be able to bear giants without dying I explained it last time that they had a growth factor which means that they were born the same size or similar to a, to a normal baby. And then they just kept growing and growing and growing and growing out of proportion. Um, there, there is giantism, which is a genetic disorder. Just this is on another scale. Um, so, yeah, they didn't. Otherwise, they would have not even reached second trimester if they were if they were. At, um, incubating a giant in a baby form no then when giants mate with each other then the pregnancy has uh, that has uh, a giant a, a baby in the same scale of a giant so that's why they they every generation giants became bigger and bigger because they had more room and they, they for for developing even a bigger um, infant and then they were eating so much that the whole earth was destroyed because they they uh, you can imagine that a 30 50 cubits uh, <laughs> entity the amount of calories that burns on a daily basis and how much needs to consume so that's to basically to confirm that women were impregnated by angels the gestation was I would say somewhat normal if normal can even be the term but then when the child came to term and was delivered no c-section was needed because the, the baby was not gigantic as yet then he the, the baby would develop uh, rapidly and become a, a gi a ginormous as you know 
but when it was outside of the womb, not inside of the womb. Otherwise, gestation would have never been viable. Because if the baby is 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 too big for the woman to bear, but not man, but not well formed, then both the mother and this creature inside of her would die, right? So, because if you, you can imagine, uh, if you if you think that just the the um, embryo alone could be as big as <laughs> I don't know as a baby hippo, then obviously she's not able to carry that um, t- that pregnancy full term. So, but if if a woman was bearing a giant, and this giant was a female giant, when she was born, she was born in a normal size. Then she started to grow up, develop, becoming then a female giant of 30 cubits. Then when she was getting pregnant by another giant, then of course the the baby would have been big even within her womb. So hopefully it makes sense. So it was just a matter of scale and then postnatal development. So I like this term, yes, postnatal rapid development. Okay, this is the term. And after this shall come a greater wickedness that which will have been accomplished in their days. For I know the mysteries for the Lord, which the holy ones have explained and showed me, and which I read in the heavenly tablets, and I saw written in them, that one generation after another will do evil in this way, and evil will last until generation of righteousness arise, and evil and wickedness shall end, and violence shall cease from the earth, and until good shall come on the earth on them, they can and now please go to your son Lamech and explain to him that this child is his and is his son in truth and without lie. So this 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 fragment is Enoch talking to his son Methuselah, because Methuselah was crying, um, uh, preoccupied because his son, basically Enoch's nephew was afraid because uh, a child was born noah and he was pale he was basically it was basically he had white skin like angels we talked about this and so they were preoccupied that maybe his the, the, lamech's wife was was raped by an angel and that she bare uh, this child and so the only person that could basically tell them if this child was an, an angel or not was Enoch because he was the only man who ascended to heaven alive so they asked him please come down to us and give us counsel please tell us if this child is mine or if uh, or if an angel raped my wife you know this is a very, imagine this crazy conversation wow and uh, so yeah, so basically Enoch was um, the grandfather of Lamech, and then when he heard about this problem with his grandson and his great grandson, then he decided to come down to confirm or deny the paternity. So imagine this it was <laughs> biblical paternity court because paternity is so very important. The soul of all the sons of men, and behold, these are the pits for, for their prison. They were made thus until the day of their judgment, until the final day of the great judgment, which will be imposed on them. They can there, I saw, the spirit of the dead man complaining, and his moaning rising to heaven and crying and complaining. So this is another segment, um, and he's talking about Enoch when he is... Uh, um, basically um, told by the watchers uh, the um, uh, the fate of those who rebelled and their imprisonment and also the fact that Yahweh is going to uh, bring and unleash the flood to destroy all of this um, debauchery rape and and breeding and 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 so basically he's listening to the complaints of humankind crying for their lives and for their desperation. Um, so he wants to basically just kill everybody 
groups, both those who are unclean and then those who are desperate, just as a way to um, um, end their pain. Let's say that. Yeah. And behold, those mountains roughly northwards on the eastern side are were shown other mountains full of excellent um, art and pepper wort and cinnamon and pepper uh, vacant and from there I was led to east of all those mountains far from them to e the east of the earth and I was taken over the Red Sea and greatly distanced myself from it and crossed over the darkness far from it and I passed to the paradise of righteousness because in Enoch 3 uh, because this is probably a segment that is almost reminiscent of the third book of Enoch. It's talking about the different levels of heaven, that there are some parts who have a lot of light and others who have darkness because they're transition places where they, um, where they, um, they keep uh, imprisoned uh, these, some entities who um, are waiting to be sent to uh, to hell. Um, so you can think about, you know, the court of heaven where there is his castle, you know, with Yahuwah, the servants, the, the angels, and the, 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 the people, so, so basically the court adoring him, and then other sections where there is um, uh, basically um, uh, doing the, the judgment, the tribunal, and then the sentencing, and after the sentencing, the servant of the sentence so it's very important then there is a part about astronomy but we will cover it on another episode then on the then on this um that screen that sea scrolls there is also a book of um inside called the book of giants and there are many fragments and i will put the codes of the fragments in the email in the you know on the screen so you can go and read them for yourself the Book of Giants is taught is basically written on the perspective of the the Nephilim, basically the sons, uh, and daughters of born from angels who mated with fem with women, uh, basically with the sons of with the daughters of men. So the sons of uh, of Yah, the angels who mated with the uh, basically uh, human human females and why in the beginning it's is that because angels are only in the male form but they don't have male organs um they they develop those because they wanted to accomplish this evil deed of impregnating the women because Yahweh when he had designed angels he designed them as male in the sense they had uh, they have attribute of males like their face their bone structure and the fact that they need to uh, take heavy lifts of different things because they're working for him right but they don't have genitals because they are eternal but they uh, obviously had access to um, 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 either technology to <laughs> build themselves some, um, or they probably ate of the same fruit of the Adam and did uh, to then develop um, develop sexual organs. So angels in heaven, there are no female angels as such. Doesn't they don't exist? Then Nephilim, Nephilim can be both male and female. Why? Because when angel mated with with a human female, then the product could have been either female or male, and, and this and this explains why giants were able to then multiply so much because they they were giants of both sexes, and also other horrible creatures of both sexes based on the fact that uh, they were inheriting i the uh, you know the either the x or the y from the angel father and the um, human mother and yeah it's just so bizarre and and creepy it's hard it's even difficult to comprehend about the death of, of our soul so this is like a giant speaking and all his his colleagues entered and 
Olya explained them what Gilgamesh had told him. Gilgamesh is uh, one of the most um, uh, famous giants, so much that they think he was a king. Um, that they mummified and they found his tomb in Iraq and, and I told talked about it probably in an episode maybe I don't know and uh, Babi's roared and judgment was pronounced on him and the guilty cursed the princess but the giants rejoiced over him and he was cursed again and he accepted it then two of them dreamed dreams and the sleep of their eyes uh, fled from them and they rose and opened their eyes, and they went to Shemiazah, their father. Then he told a story in the congregation of their colleagues to uh, the colleagues, the Nephilim. I saw, I wandered in my dream that night. Behold, a big garden was planted with all kinds of trees. There were the gardeners, and they were watering every tree in the garden. Many roots grew out of their, of their stock, and out of one three grew uh, three shots. I was looking until tons of fire came down from heaven and I was looking until the uh, was covered with all the water and the fire devoured all the trees of the whole orchard. But I did not devour the tree and its shouts and the land when it was destroyed here in the end of the dream and the giants were unable to explain the dream. So basically this is like the giants assembly and uh, one of them has this dream about just gardening gardening, and all of a sudden fire coming from the sky to destroy uh, the, uh, the garden and the, and, the, and, and the gardeners basically. So they were asking for an interpretation of this dream and the giants were unable to explain the dream and he said, you will give the dream to Enoch, the interpreter scribe, that he might interpret to us the dream. So you will say, why giants are asking Enoch for interpretation? Because giants are evil, they're sons of, of perdition, they're sons of the fallen angels, and they are Nephilim, they're destined to destruction, etc. Well, in the book of Enoch number three, there is a discussion between Enoch and some of the uh, Nephilim, some of the giants. And some of the giants, they re rebuked their father and they repented and they asked for salvation. Obviously, I'm not sure if at the end of the book they were saved or not. I, I don't even know. Um, but, what, but the point is that some giants were afraid and also respected Enoch because he was the only man who ascended to heaven, and also because he had uh, direct contact with um, with angels. Because at this point in time, the fathers of these giants have been chained to the bottomless pit, so then they were left on their own to figure it out, basically. And um, and so they asked Enoch, because they couldn't obviously ask Yawat to come down, because Yawat doesn't like these type of breeds. Because they were not intended in his creation, so he doesn't care about the giants like that. <laughs> so the uh, then Oyaha, his brother, answered and said before the giants, "I too, I saw a wonder in my dream this night. Behold, the ruler of heaven descended to earth, and thrones were set, and the great holy ones sat." sat. Hundreds and hundreds were mis ministering to him. Thousands and thousands stood before him. He's talking about Yahuwah in his throne. And behold, books were opened, and judgment was pronounced, and the judgment was written, and signature was signed, and the Great One re reigns over all the living and flesh and over all those who rule. Here's the end of the dream. So basically he's talking about Judgment Day, that he opens the Book of Life, and if those who have written on it will go into eternal life, those who are not, go for the lake of fire. Uh, obviously, um, he um, might not know these things, but this is uh, the, the dream that he had um, <clears throat> about Judgment Day. And, behold, all the giants were terrified and called Mahawe. And he came to the congregation of the Nephilim, and, and the giants sent him to Enoch and said to him, 
go to him pre uh, previously you listened to his voice and say to him that he should explain to you the interpretation of the dreams that all the shall uh, that all sh should rest with those who hunger strongly after it then this other fragment i showed myself mighty and by power of my strong arm and by the vigor of my might rose against all flesh and mad made war on uh, on them but i not find the strength uh, me uh, the strengthen me for my adversaries the angels of heaven dwell in heaven and they abide in the holy places and i will not for they are more powerful than missing of wild beast came and i country peep and and came and the con in the country people cried oh oh yeah spoke to him thus my dream has, dep has ex depressed me and the sleep of my eyes fled from me for looking at the vision behold i know that i cannot sleep and i cannot ask things for them then gigamesh said your dream and then missing <laughs> yeah So, um, the thing uh, is that, uh, yeah, there was a continuation because obviously uh, Enoch had then interpreted their dreams, etc. A lot of people are sad that we don't have more fragments about the Book of Giants, but the Book of Giants is very fragmented, unfortunately. Um, however, I mean, you get the idea. They, <laughs> they will all die in the end, so... <laughs> in the end because we know about the blood so uh, I mean spoiler alert <laughs> we know the ending already so uh, so but there is no point in um, in uh, even um, thinking about it so Maybe I can read the uh, 1Q23 fragments that there might be a bit interesting. They knew the secrets of missing, sin was great in the earth, missing, and they killed many, missing, they begat giants. Everything that the earth produced missing the great fish missing the sky with all the group missing fruit of the earth in all kinds of grain and all the trees missing beasts and reptiles missing all creeping things of earth of the earth and they observed all missing every harsh deed missing utterance missing missing male and female and among humans two hundred angels choose animals on which to perform unnatural acts including presumably humans basically uh bestiality um, and they borrow and they bore uh, monsters from them two hundred Two donkeys, two hundred asses, two hundred rams, block, two hundred goats, two hundred beasts of the field from every animal, from every bird for miscegenation. So they were raping animals to make um, to make monsters. Yeah, my goodness, it's just disgusting. But we did read it in Jasher, so there are no. <laughs> Um, there are no surprises here. The outcome of the demonic corruption was violence, per perversion, and abroad of monstrous beings. So, they defiled, missing, they begot giants and monsters. They begot, and behold, all the earth was corrupted, missing, with its blood and by the hand missing giants which did not suffice for them missing and they were seeking to devour many missing the monsters attacked it 
flesh all monsters missing will be missing they will arise missing missing lacking in true knowledge because missing the earth grew corrupt missing mighty missing they were considering missing from the angels up upon missing in the end it will perish and die missing they caused great corruption in the earth missing this did not suffice to missing they will be and then missing So the giants began to be troubled by a series of dreams, vision. Mawai the Titan, son of the angel Barakel, reports the first of these dreams to his fellow giants. He sees a tablet being immersed in water when it emerges all but three names have been washed away. The dream evidently symbolized the destruction but of all but Noah and his sons by the flood. They drenched the tablet in water, missing. The waters went up over the tablet, missing. They lifted out the tablet from the water of. So it's very beautiful, this analogy that the tablet, right? That Because you have written the, the names of those who are saved the same way you would be in the Book of Life. But at the same time, the tablet was found under water. Which means that this is a metaphor of the fact that everything will be underwater and only Noah and his sons will be spared from the waters. Extremely beautiful as an analogy. Um, this vision is for cursing and sorrow. Missing. I know. This vision is for cursing and sorrow. I am the one who confessed missing the whole group of the castaways that i shall go to missing the spirits of the slain complaining about their killers and crying out missing that we shall die together and be made an end of missing much and i will be sleeping and, and bread missing for my dwelling the vision also missing enter into the gathering of the giants Oya, oh, yeah. and he said to Mawai. It's very interesting because Oya oh, yeah, is also an, the name, I think, of um, pagan divinity in some West African culture. So it comes full circle, you know. Said to Mawai, uh, without trembling, who showed you all vision, my brother? Missing. Barakel, my father, was with me. Missing. Before Mawai had finished telling what he had seen, missing, said to him, Now I have heard wonders if a barren woman gives birth, missing. Thereupon Oya said to Aya, missing, to be destroyed from upon the earth and missing, the earth when missing, they were before the giants. Your strength, missing. Thereupon, Oya to Aya, uh, missing. Then he answered, It is not for us, but for Aziel, for he did, missing. The children of angels are the giants. And they would not tell all their powered ones to be neglected, missing. We have not been cast down, we have strength. So then uh, there is the, again, the fragment that we read about the, the war, um, you know, the, those who reside in heaven have more strength than them because those are the counterparts of their fathers. Uprooted trees, we read them. Then, note the scribe, he will be interpreted for us 
the dream. This is the giant telling that Enoch will interpret the dream. Thereupon his fellow Oya declared and said to the giants, Two had a dream this night, O giants, and behold, the ruler of heaven came down to earth, and such is the end of the dream. Thereupon all the giants and monsters grew afraid and called Mawai, came to them, and the giants pleaded with him and sent him to Enoch. The noted scribe, they said to him, Go, missing, to you that, missing, you have heard of his voice. And he said to him, He will, missing, and interpret the dreams, missing, how long the giants have to live. So, Mawai comes to Enoch and makes his request. He mounted up in the air like strong winds and flew with his hands like eagles. So basically, it's like Superman, you know, in the movies. He left behind the inhabitants, uh, the world and passed over desolation, the, dra the great desert. And Enoch saw him and hailed him. And, I, and Mawai said to him, Either and he, either a second time to Mawai, the giants awake your words and all the monsters of the earth missing if has been carried missing from the days of missing there missing and they will be added missing we will know from you their meaning missing 200 trees from heaven came down so it's very interesting that Maui was flying uh, uh, you know with his hands like eagles but he doesn't have oh, um, wings because wings are for angels right so how did he propel you know and was he able to fly in the sky like superman i don't know but definitely the Superman situation and these um, superheroes that they're able to fly in the sky by just propelling themselves with no wings, no nothing, with their little um, cape on. They definitely just read the Book of Giants and made a comics off of it. You see, nothing is new under this guy. You see, Superman was taken from, <laughs> from this episode of the Book of Giants. It's absolutely incredible. I don't know you, why you guys don't read the Dead Sea Scrolls. Maybe just because only crazy people like me go and read this stuff. I don't know. <sighs> and so uh, Enoch sends back a tablet with his green message of judgment with hope for repentance. So basically Enoch just sent them <laughs> a message because he could not be bothered. The scribe Enoch missing a copy of the second tablet that Enoch sent missing in the very handwriting of Enoch the noted scribe missing in the name of Yahuwah the great and the holy one to Shemiaza and all his companions missing let it be known to you then not missing and the things you have done and the, your wives missing they and their sons and the wives of their sons missing by your licen licentiousness on the earth and basically your lasciviousness their their lust you know there has been upon you and the and the land is crying out and complaining about you and the deeds of your children missing the harm that you have done to it missing until Raphael arrives behold destruction is coming a great flood and i will destroy and it will destroy all living things and whatever it is in the deserts and the seas and the meaning of the matter missing upon you for evil and now loosen the bonds binding to you evil missing and pray and then final division of enoch Great fear seized me, and I fell on my face. I heard his voice, missing. He dwelt among human beings, but he did not learn from them. So, very powerful uh, section that we just read. <laughs> my goodness. Yeah. So the Marvel people have just read the Book of Giants. <laughs> so.
So this is the admonition associated with the flood. And it's a um, fragment, again, about this uh, particular part of history. He crowned the mountains with predators and poured food on them, and he satisfied every soul with good fruit. Whoever does my will, let him eat and be satisfied, says Yahuwah. Let them bless my holy name, but behold, they have done what is wicked in my eyes, said Yahuwah. They rebelled against Yahweh through their actions, and Yahweh judged them according to all their ways and according to the thoughts of the inclination of their evil hearts. And he thundered at them in his power, and all the foundation of the earth trembled, and the waters burst for, forth from the abysses, and the windows of heaven opened, and the abysses overflowed with mighty waters, and the windows of heaven emptied out rain and he destroyed them by the flood therefore everything perished on the dry land and men beasts birds and winged creatures that died and the giants did not escape and yahuwah made a sign and he said he is a bow in the cloud that he might remember the covenant that there might not might no more be on earth the waters of blood and that the mass of waters might not be uh, let loose their wickedness when they know how to distinguish between good and evil for behold they sprout forth like grass but a shadow are their days on the earth and now pray hearken to me my people heed me O oh, you simple for from everlasting to everlasting he will have mercy the might of Yahweh remember the miracles which he did in Egypt and his mar marvels in the land of Ham. Let your heart shake because of the fear of him, and your soul will rejoice according to his good graces. So basically, this is a good summary that says, you know, that he was fed up with everything, cleaned everything out, and then is talking about uh, the fact that he reduced our age. And then he's also just sprinkling around the miracles that he did in Egypt because most likely this fragment was after um, after uh, after Exodus. And there is the uh, the um, fragment ages of creation interpretation concerning the ages made by Yahuwah all the ages of the accomplishment of all the events past and future before ever he created them he determined the works of age by age and it was engraved on heavenly tablets the ages of their domination this is the order of creation of men from Noah to Abraham until he begot ice and ten weeks of years then the interpretation concerns azazel and the angels who came to the daughters of men and they bore to them giants and concerning azazel and the iniquity and to the cause uh, that caused them all to inherit wickedness judgment and judgment of the congregation let's go to the book of noah now his father and when lamech noah's father saw the child made the rooms of the house shine like rise of sun to frighten them so it's like this is the ep the moment when uh, <laughs> Lame uh, lamek was scared because the child was pale and he had very bright eyes you know the same eyes albino people have so he was very very frightened for the glory of your splendor, for the glory of Yahuwah, will be lifted in glory, glorious majesty, will be glorified amidst the sons of heaven. Of his hand, his two knees, and of his head, and on his hair, a birthmark of reddish color, and the shape of the lentil will be on his face, and the small bark of birthmark on his thigh, and after two years he will know how to distinguish one thing from another in his heart in his youth he will be like like a man who knows nothing until the time when he knows the three books and then he will acquire prudence and learn understanding why seers come to him to his knees and with his father and his ancestor of brothers will hurt, uh, will hurt him 
Counsel and prudence, pr um, prudence will be with him, and he will know the secrets of men. His wisdom will reach all people, and he will know the secrets of all living, and, they, and all their designs against him will come to nothing, and his rule over all living will be great. His design will succeed, for he is the elect of Yahweh. His birth and the breath of his spirit and his design shall be forever. This particular fragment, who knows? So many people say it could have been a description of Noah, but it doesn't align with what will be uh, read later. Other people, they say um, it's um, it's a, it's like a, a, a premonition of the birth of Yeshua. We shall see. I'll, we will definitely keep this fragment in mind for future reading to see we, which which child was he depicting. Blessed be early man who teaches his sons the, the doctrine of wisdom, for he will not die. In the days of wickedness we woe to you, O fool, for your mouth will deceive you by incurring the death penalty. Who will write these words of mine in a book that will not decay and keep this word of mine in a scroll which will not fade away? Behold, and the pleasure of the wicked will cease forever. Then there is this fragment, paraphrasing the Genesis. The heavens and the earth and all their hosts have he made his word, and Yahuwah rested on the seventh day from all the work which he had made, and his Holy Spirit to all the living and creeping creatures he put man and earth to rule over it, and to eat the fruits of the ground without eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. He rose against him, and they forgot with an evil inclination and for deeds of Missing peace payment. <laughs> then save Noah and his wife and the wives of his sons from the waters of the flood. Yahweh closed it behind them the windows of heaven, opened under all the heaven for the waters to rise on the earth. Forty days and forty nights was rain over them, over the earth. And in order to know the glory of the Most High, to reach to him, he enlightened the heaven. Sign for generation of eternity, and never more will the flood destroy the earth, or the periods of day and the night to shine on heaven and earth, their sons in the into the river. And then the rest is about Moses and the frogs, so we will read it when we reach Moses. So then we can go into another beautiful um, fragment, which is uh, called Fragment IQ AP Gen IQ 20. Very cute one. Um, it's very dramatic, like, so um, <laughs> it's so very dramatic. Behold, I thought. Then within my heart, the conception was due to the watchers. So this is Lamech. Because before we read, um, basically, Enoch trying, um, the perspective of Enoch and Methuselah, that they are trying to talk to each other about uh, the paternity of Noah. And this is the version of, of um, the event according to Lamech and his wife. Due to the watchers and the holy ones, and to the giants, and my heart was trembled within me because of this child. Then I, Lamech, approach, uh, approached uh, Bethanos, my wife, in haste, and said to her, By the Most High, the great, the great, uh, the great hell, the king of all the worlds, and the ruler of the sons of heaven, until you tell me all things tr tr truthfully, if I, if I, Tell me, this is truthfully and not falsely, by the king of all the worlds, until you tell me truthfully and not falsely. So this is like, imagine the situation. This man is like, oh, this baby, tell me who the father is. Is this child mine? 
<laughs> and this woman is like, yeah, I promise you, I, I, no, I didn't cheat on you. They didn't take me against my will. Then ben Betanosh, my wife, spoke to me with much heat and said, Oh, my brother, oh, my Lord, remember my pleasure, the lying together and my soul with its body, within its body. And I, and I tell you all things truthfully. <laughs> this is so funny. <laughs> remember, <laughs> that, basically saying, listen. Don't you remember that we were having, you know, intercourse together? We were lying together, side by side. <laughs> I made this child <laughs> with you, not on my own. <laughs> I can't. My heart was then greatly troubled with me. And when Benatosh, my wife, saw that my countenance has changed, then she mastered her anger and spoke to me, saying, Oh, my Lord, oh, my brother, remember my pleasure. <laughs> I swear to you by the Holy Great One, the King of Heavens, that this seed is yours and this conception is from you. This fruit was not planted by you. And by no stranger. So this fruit was planted by you. And by no stranger or watcher or son of heaven. Why is your countenance thus changed and dismayed? And why is your spirit thus distressed? I speak to you truthfully. <laughs> this conversation is madness. Okay. <laughs> like she's so off the chain she's absolutely she feels disrespected mocked and just the funny part remember my pleasure <laughs> i can't <laughs> like was i alone <laughs> I oh this is too funny <laughs> But it's nice that she was very, very, um, uh, you know, specific with it. You know, we were together. No, we made this child together. And I swear to you by the Holy Great One, the King of the heavens, that this seed is yours. And this conception is from you. This fruit was planted by you, by no stranger or watcher. Or son of heaven. She had to clarify this was not from another man, not from a fallen angel, not from another being. It was you, my man. Because <laughs> sometimes men are like, no, this child is not mine. Because if the child looks funky, <laughs> men are first to disown the child. Like, hey, this funky dude is not my seed. <laughs> Coming to find out, <laughs> yes, this funky child is yours. <laughs> <laughs> then I, Lamech, ran to Methuselah, my father, and I told him all these things, and I asked him to go to Enoch, his father, for he would surely learn all the things from him. For he was behold, and he shared the, the lot of the angels who taught him all things. And when Methuselah heard my words, he went to Enoch, his father, to learn all the things truthfully from him his will he went at once to parwen he, he found him there he said to enoch his father oh my father oh my lord to whom i and i so to you lest you be angry with me because i i come here i abstain from injustice and in the womb of her who conceived me i search for truth and I, and when I emerged from my mother's womb, I was planted for truth, and I lived all my days in truth, and I walked in the path, the paths of eternal truth. Basically, he's saying, "Look, I'm here because I was conceived in truth." Okay, my mother was not for the streets. <laughs> I know who my father is, so tell me if this is my grandchild or not. <laughs> 
You cannot make this stuff up. You can tell these are black people. And these are... <laughs> you just... <laughs> you can tell these are black conversations. I just can't. <laughs> and when I emerged from my mother's womb, I was planted in truth. That's right. Uh, and the Holy One was with me, and my path was t truth spent to warn me of the of lie, which led to darkness. And I gir girded my loins. Girded my loins he means he it was a he was a a man of honor. He was not going around having intercourse with women, so he was protecting his seed you know i guarded my loins please men out here guard your loins <laughs> please please do with the vision of truth and wisdom paths of violence then i noah became a man and clung to the truth and seized and i took amzra his daughter as wife my wife she conceived and bore three sons and daughters then i look i took wives for my sons from among my brothers daughters and i gave my daughters to my brothers sons according to the law of the eternal precept with the most high ordained to the sons of men so yeah unfortunately this part is uh, missing after he comes here but we know by reading the previous fragments then uh, when Methuselah meets um, uh, Enoch, Enoch tells them, do not worry, that is your son's seed, is not a child of the watcher, is an albino for protection, he's a black man in disguise, so do not worry. Then, obviously, it then starts off, I was, you know, born in truth, I am the, you know, um, and then basically, unfortunately, a big chunk is vacant, and then we are uh, been, then um, told about Noah marriage. So part of his infancy fragment is missing, but we know about his his development and his first years from Enoch and other books that we read previously. So no um, missing things there. Um, and then to my brother's sons, according to the law, eternal precept with the Mosaid. And in my days, when according to my reckoning, tangibly had been completed, the moment come uh, for my sons to take wives for themselves, heaven, I saw in a vision and was explained and made known the action of the sons of heaven and the heavens. Then I hid this mystery in my heart and explained to no man. To me and great and in a message of the Holy One, he spoke to me in a vision and stood before me. And the message of the great Holy One called out to you, saying, O oh Noah, and I reckon the whole conduct of the sons of earth. I knew and explained all in two weeks. Then the blood which the giants had spilled out was at ease and waited until missing the Holy Ones with daughters of men. I, Noah, found grace, greatness, and truth. Till the gates of heaven to um, to men and cattle, wild beasts and birds, missing on them the earth and all that on it, the seas and on the mountains, all the constel uh, constel uh, um, constellations of heaven, the sun, the moon and the stars, and the waters. M missing parts. I shall reward you, the great Holy One, and I rejoiced in the words of Yahuwah of heaven, and I shouted, If you all your master the king, and all the world forever and ever, until all eternity, Bakan, the ark rested on one of the mountains of Hararat, an eternal fire, missing, and atoned for the whole earth, and the beginning of missing, I burned the fat on fire, secondly poured the blood on the base of the altar, I burned all their flesh on the altar, and thirdly, the turtle doves on the altar, on the offering, I put fine flour mixed with oil and with incense and meat, and meat offering, I put salt on them, and smell of my offering rose up, 
to heaven. Mountains and deserts, Noah went out and walked on the earth through its length and breadth, the light on uh, her and their leaves and their fruit, and the land was filled with grass, herbs, and grain. Then I blessed Yahuwah of heaven, who made splendid things, his for ever and praise in is his, and I repented the blessing on accord in account of his grace for the earth and on account of his removing and causing to perish from it all those who do violence and wickedness and lies on account of his rescuing the righteous man was revealed to me and Yahweh of heaven spoke to me and said to me do not fear noah i shall be with you and with your sons who will be like you forever of the earth and rule over them and over its deserts and its mountains and all uh, that are them and behold i gave i give all of it for you and to your sons to eat the green things and the grass of the earth but you shall not eat any blood your fear and are we for ever in the mountains of ararat afterward i descended and my sons and the sons of my sons for the destruction was great in the earth after the flood to my first son sham was born to begin with the son and then we know the other generations of uh, noah but we will read that another time i think because it's very important to read it um when it's um appropriate but definitely the conversation between lamech and his wife was um truthfully um worth worth it worth it for every <laughs> for every dead sea scroll found this is amazing. I don't even know why it's not, you know, public knowledge, but I think this conversation is priceless. You can tell these are some black folks because it's some black folks problems and <laughs> and with some black folks um dialogues. Oh my lord, oh my brother, listen to me, bro. Don't you remember when we were getting it on? <laughs> I swear to you, by the Holy Great One, the kings of heaven, that this baby is yours. <laughs> and this conception is from you, boo. This fruit was planted by you, my man, <laughs> and by no stranger. Nor watcher, nor son of heaven. <laughs> this is so funny. I can't. <laughs> remember my... <laughs> Yo, bro. Remember my pleasure. <laughs> the lying together and my soul within its body. <laughs> and I tell you all things truthfully. <laughs> Can't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. Tu es le père. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you guys the Bible is a trip and you must be ready for it <laughs> buckle up <laughs> so Genesis 6 because we read before the Apocrypha because I thought it were juicier but now we can also dissect this part and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and the daughters were born unto them that the sons of God mm -hmm, saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives all which they chose it's interesting that they used the term wives <laughs> but they were just sex slaves you know <laughs> plus if you're taking a woman against her will is that a marriage I don't think so that's crazy and again you see the daughters of men versus the son of god because um because these angels were 
the, uh, the, the root of the problem between Satan and humanity is this: the Yahuwah created angels as his as his um, commanders and his like servants, etc., and also their sons, and they felt betrayed when they created humans uh, because uh, they're like, "Why are you creating these and saying that these will uh, reign over us, etc.?" So. Then they rebelled against him. They're like, no, we're rebelling against your creature. We refuse this entity to be uh, governing over us, etc. So they tempted them, um, like any older brother would do. <laughs> but then they're like, hmm, they surely have pretty, pretty women, these men. And so they went down and they took them. Yeah. Same way when colonialists they go around the world like in Papua New Guinea or <laughs> or Africa, they're like they don't care. They just take a woman and they're like, yeah. And then this woman will then give birth to a child that this she doesn't want. <laughs> so yeah, it's very common. That's how they actually make um genetic cleansing. It's called a blanqueamento. Um, they always send the men first into an area to uh, impregnate the women, uh, infiltrate the genetic pool, and so their sons will then, or daughters or whatever they are, will then uh, be their, um, basically the stronghold while they come with more and uh, and confine them, etc. So that's how it's done normally in the, this um, in these areas. Especially when you think about the uh, American model or Australian model, they always send the men first to do the raping, the uh, impregnating of the population, and then they either kill the men or they confine the men into prison reservations, etc until then uh, they create a third race and then uh, little by little this uh, third race is then in uh, in, in sorry is um uh in, included into the wider gene pool by so slowly the indigenous people disappear by an, a genetic annihilation you see, so before it was used to done, be done by force. Now instead, they create uh, propositions of uh, of self destruction and willing participation of indigenous or unwanted races. So that's why there are propaganda on TV or commercials or TV programs about interracial or interethnic dating. So, uh, so they they um, unwanted races or ethnicities are destroyed and wiped out from the face of the earth by uh, by marriage because every time a child is born then a specific community disappears so because i know that this is like a off topic but if you think about the american model uh, the in they had two different instances of of genetic um um um, strategies. The first was with in with the Native Americans. The, with the Native Americans, they use the same model as they use in Australia and in Canada, which is um, uh, raping of the women, confining of the men, until the no more indigenous are left, and then the third. Uh, unwanted race is either included into the wider population or they intermarry among each other, but there is no more threat. And indeed, the Native Americans of today are not Native Americans, are mixed race. They have white blood in them, because if you see the pictures of the original Native Americans, they were really, really dark skinned. They were basically in the category of melanated people, the same way as the Filipino. They were black Filipinos before, now they are white Filipinos, and etc, etc. While with the uh, slave model, 
is more difficult. The slave model is that they they encouraged the 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 enslaved population uh, to uh, to breed, but not to breed how they wanted. So there was no institution of marriage because marriage is only for uh, for free humans because if you allow slaves to marry it means that they have rights over their wives or their children so, which means that they're allowed to procreate only with appointed uh, members of uh, of the of the of the community uh, designated by their master so that you don't uh, confuse uh, the people thinking that you have your own will because if you're property the master decides who the cattle breeds with who right so basically what they used to do they used to have breeding farms where they were keeping women and forcing them uh, to be impregnated by whoever they thought it had to be um, so basically these women were raped by their own kind which in creates very um, difficult psychological um, repercussions as today that's why you see on 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 inter on the internet uh, black americans and um, women and men fighting and don't liking each other because they were put against each other the men were forced to violate their own women and the women had to then endure violence by both their um, uh, their uh, uh, black counterparts and the white master because they were property which meant that they 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 were not they were the least um, considered uh, uh, persons on the land because they were raped by any 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 kind their own and their masters so the creation of slave farms was to basically um, originate the problem that slavery was becoming outlawed in many countries so not many countries were shipping uh, black slaves anymore so the only way to keep um, uh, the demand for cotton and other uh, agricultural uh, products was to breed slaves within the land breed them uh, in just in specific ways to both have uh, healthy children but at the same time to, to disregard the nucleus of the family because if you allow people to get married and uh, have children in love then they will try to protect their children and maybe rebel instead if you're creating children in hate this woman is alone she has no husband and, her ch and she will ha also have hatred towards the child because it was conceived in rape so that's why for the master is easier to sell the child because no one has interest in that child understood so then this problem created that they had way too many black people at a certain point so that's why they created uh, racial laws to segregate them problem with segregation is that if you don't have a way to de uh, denaturalize population they actually um, uh, segregation increases the number of people because they are then just cohabitating with themselves and so they can uh, reproduce to a high higher scale and so then they decided to uh, to uh, abolish segregation and to make inclusion inclusion allows then people to marry each other and if people marry each other then they can uh, uh, d dilute the genetic pool of an of an unwanted race because <clears throat> it takes uh, three generations to take out uh, a particular ethnicity or a race from a, from a particular community so they saw it was more effective to uh, allow uh, black Americans uh, to travel move different states and marry other uh, other in within other communities to decrease the number of this uh, of this population problem is that most of black people in america are segregated in poverty and if you're poor then you more likely will gravitate around your own kind and so they have the problem now of single mothers who have many many children 
from different men um, and, and begin it again because they're all traumatized. They don't know what a, a functional and healthy family is because you need to think that that slavery sometimes was not abolished since even in the 20th century. We know stories of people uh, they were chained in um, secretly in some farms in Virginia or other places until the 1960s, which means that it's impossible to think that African Americans today can get married and have functional marriages and and uh, and have children in love because they have a lot of um, trauma to unpack because you can inherit trauma the same way you can inherit um, strength and this is the reason why they're pushing for interracial marriages in America to make sure that they are decreasing and then in a, in a probably in three decades what they are pro prospecting is that the uh, African American population will then disappear by annihilation, genetic depopulation. Um, <coughs> and but again there is still the problem of single mothers that they have children outside of wedlock. How to in how to originate that problem? Well now they have um, they are promoting abortion. Uh, with uh, uh, with Planned Parenthood, and these organizations are mostly um, uh, they're mostly funded and sent into black communities. So then, uh, single mothers, instead of giving birth to too many black children, they abort them, and then uh, those children, if they live, they are instead promoted to go into uh, into multicultural settings so they can marry a person outside of their race and then be annihilated. That's the plan for the next two to three decades. And if it was, is going to be successful, they will then um, share this program in other places around the world where they don't want to have unwanted um, communities, you see? Um, for instance, in France, they have a problem with the Muslim community. Um, they don't like Arabs, not for genetics, because they're very close to them genetically, but they don't like them for their culture. So they're then promoting intermarriage among people to then decrease the threat of de-franchising uh, the uh, French, uh, French population and nationality. So when you think about this, uh, uh, this like multiculturalism, inclusivity, uh, loving everybody, this is actually uh, the prototype and the daughter of Nazism because the Nazis were trying to do uh, the cleansing of DNA by force, by telling people what to do and who to marry. And they saw that that model was not successful. Instead, the integration model is very successful. If you lure people in and you tell them that they, they are accepted, that they are all equal and everybody loves each other, then you are promoting interracial and interethnic marriages, and then their child will then dilute into the bigger population, and then this child will have children with the, the bigger population, and the DNA of their mother or father in the second generation will be completely invisible. And this pro model is actually uh, seemingly successful in the in in the United Kingdom. Uh, where again, there, there are a lot of uh, communities who are unwanted and the best way to clean them out of the population is not by rejection, but it's actually by marriage. So a lot of uh, um, communities, a lot of uh, 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 neighbors are targeted with interracial and interethnic marriage advertisement and TV programs to avoid the uh, uh, overcrowding of unwanted races. So basically this model was created by the fallen angels to decrease the number of, of natural humans. So if anyone is um, then cooperating with that, this model is then um, is a participant in, in uh, and the, the destruction of humankind. 
and actually this model has, has been uh, approved since the 1960s even in Africa. There are some ethnicities who are unwanted because they have a very um, uh, um, somewhat pure DNA with no infiltration. So the best way to uh, get, take them out is not by um, uh, by murder, but it's by, by marriage. If you think about even the genocide of the, against the Tutsi in 1994, where they killed more than one million people, um, uh, again, this was because during the segregation of the 1960, the number of Tutsi had multiplied because by oppression and segregation, they had more children amongst each other. And so it was becoming too threatening against the regime of these um, uh, of these Philistines. And so what they have they have discovered it was like okay, let's do a ripening of the fruit. So they decided to then do mass killings in sat in satanic ritualistic abuse um, model. But then again they saw that then it wasn't it was very very difficult and then attacked the finances of the country. So then they decided to adopt the model that they use in the in the other Western countries, which is again, genocide by annihilation. So what they do, they push matrimonial and weddings in between ethnicities, which are never successful. They have really high rates of domestic violence, uh, murder and divorce. Their children, they have a very high uh, statistical uh, drug problems and, pro and problems with the law. They have very low um, income. And so they, this is the best way to destroy the Tutsi population that they have decided to, to go along with. So nobody cares about the Tutsi people except myself. You should fight against this uh, model. Every time that you choose to marry your own and having children, you're fighting against the destruction of humankind. So think about that deeply. Think about it. Every time you see a friend of yours that decides to marry the enemy, their child is no longer one of us and is one of them. And slowly this decreases the Tutsi population until we, re we are reaching zero. The number of people who are having successful uh, um, uh, um, same ethnicity marriage are decreasing. Why? Because they don't want us to uh, fruit, be fruitful and having offspring. So actually it's counterintuitive, but the majority of uh, Tutsi people nowadays live outside of the country. Most of the people that they live in Africa, Rwanda, Uganda, Tanzania are mixed race. And those who are not, they are just, <laughs> I guess, uh, trying to fight the good fight. <laughs> but this is a big problem that nobody is addressing because a lot of people are scared or they're simply cooperating with the Nazi regime. So who, what are you going to do? Are you going to fight against the fallen angels? Or are you going to join them? Think about your forefathers, for your blood is more than 2,000 years old. Are you going to give up your birthright to the land and marry a Philistine, a Canaanite, and have an ugly, and have an ugly child? Do you want to have an ugly child? I don't want to have an ugly child. But if you are of marrying outside of your ethnicity, your child will be treacherous to you. Do you know how many people I, I know that they have mixed children and their children don't like their parent? And then when the parent gets old, they are throwing them into the care home. Do you know how many? Many. Instead, the ones who have children with their own ethnicity, that the, they are taken care of. They're taken care of really nicely. So, yeah, I hope you understand that we are fighting against, against the spirits and not the flesh. The, the spirit of breeding out, 
of your ethnicity, of your race, has been brought by the fallen angels. It was very clear in Genesis 6, because before then, humans have been just procreating among themselves in order. So obviously, the Canaanites were out of order. They were engaging in violence, raping, and all of that. That was brought as an idea, as a concept, even further by the fallen angels. But there was still some order out of the chaos. When the fallen angels came instead, everything broke loose. Everyone was going with anything. Animals, beasts, in intermarrying among different nations. All of this is the days of Noah. When in the in the final days, Yahweh is saying, actually Yeshua, the son of Yah, says, in the last day it shall be like in the days of Noah. Is is basically saying that in the last days people will will have um, um, unholy union, inter intermarry among different nations, and and having bastards, mongrels, and also all of this genetic manipulation, chimeras, hybrids, we're seeing these things unfold. So anytime you're engaging in those activities, you're going against the will of Yah. There's so many Bible verses that we will see across the entire scriptures that they are a testament to what Yahuwah has intended his creation to be. Do not in do not mix your seed with foreign nations is 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 repeated over and over to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and all of his descendants, generations after generations after generations after generations. One day when I will speak about the beautiful tale of Sabiseze, it was told by him like a testament to remember your roots, remember your land, remember your your Elohim. Thou shalt not marry with the people of the land, because those are pagans. Because when you marry um, different nations, you take upon their culture, their gods, their divination. Because it says in the scriptures that when you do, then your children will go, ag go after foreign gods. So, it's, it's spiritual, it's genetic. It's, it's everything, because that when you have a mixed child, there is also the spiritual problem is not just about transgression, but it's an administrative problem. I don't know if you anyone knows about the classes of angels. There are three cohorts of angels. There is the first sphere, the upper, the most holy sphere, where you have the seraphims, cherubims, and thrones, also called ophanim. Those are for the, um, the, the glory, the wisdom, and the protection of heaven. Then in the second sphere, you have the powers, the uh, principalities, and the... So, in, in the virtues, I believe. Then in the last one, you have dominations, and you have angels and archangels. Basically, principalities and powers are divided in two categories. You have the good principalities and powers who are still in heaven, and then there are the bad principalities and powers who followed Satan into, into his conquest to basically um, um, uh, defile Yahweh's creation. Because the point is, is Yahweh's creation. Anytime you're going against Yahweh's creation, you're following satanic agenda. Because Satan wants to basically defile anything that is pure, anything that has a order, a, a, um, and a beginning and an end. He wants to make it corrupt, so defiled and ugly and impure that will make Yahweh angry and wanted to destroy it. So when the flood happened, Satan at first was very upset because his, the children that he produced 
with his friends, the fallen angels, were destroyed in the body, but they remained in the spirit. And that's why they are running around causing problems and possessing people, etc. The one that I said about the dimension, that they don't like to be invisible uh, frequency because it's uh, difficult for them. So they want people to go into their, um, into their um, dimension for physically for convenience or if you're taking drugs alcohol i explained it before but at the same time it was satan was also very pleased because he said oh wow you have destroyed all of your creation so i accomplished what i wanted but then when yahweh decided to spare to spare noah his wife and his children then he said okay i'm gonna continue to terrorize humankind until I destroy, until the last of them. Because principalities and powers who are good, their duty is to cover, administer, guide the chosen people of Yahuwah or the nations who are doing His will. The bad principalities and powers who followed Satan, their job is to administer evil nations, pagan nations, okay? Like the ancient Greeks, the ancient Egyptians, the ancient Romans, they had evil principality and powers who were governing the, the, the fate of the entire people. Disclaimer, I just took this picture from the internet. I have no idea who these people are. Um, I guess it's, a <laughs> it's the satanic picture of the week. Um, it could be um, that this is the, the, the bride and this is the groom. And they decided to get married after having these two kids. I don't understand the reason. Why people <laughs> have children first and then get married later? I don't know. This is our. These are the last days, um, or maybe, uh, maybe this is his daughter. I don't know. She could be a half breed. You never know. These days, it's um, you know, we're near Armageddon, so <laughs> anything goes. But just so because I don't know. The, the 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 specifics i chose this picture specifically for the 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 um uh, the the phenotype at hand cuz i cannot do the blood test of this lady so i don't know if she's jewish uh like myself or if she's a, go a half gohim which means that you are gohim so if you feel if you're half um but it was just so f you can see phenotypically how different um, a gohim looks from like um, a black like Jewish person, right? Because you know, people out here they say that you need to marry within your race, but a race is a very big category. Um, you need to marry within your ethnicity because if because Yahuwah says marry your nation, doesn't say marry your race. Nation is a blood relation is not what we think now as country that your nationality is your passport your passport and a piece of land to yahuwah means nothing he looks at your blood and your family tree only <clears throat> based on that i just chose this picture so you can understand phenotypically the contrast between a bantu person and an ethiopian jewish person how and how the union looks so weird because if you are coming in here and saying that they look cute together i mean <laughs> you are delusional <laughs> you must be crazy um and the kids i don't want to talk about bad about kids but um but you don't see it now but <laughs> The funky look comes with aging. It's like cheese, you know. The the more you let it, you know, age, the more it stinks. So you will see how the big uh, paternal feature will come out. 
um, with the vengeance at some point. So because uh, because I see on the internet uh, things about such as black love and all of that, but because in America, unfortunately, they have been bred among so many different nationalities that they 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 for them they're all in one big umbrella. So I understand that for a person that is African American, this particular um, specification doesn't apply because they were bred against their will. But if you are, if you're Jewish, you've been Jewish forever. Because um, uh, when we came to this jungle situation with Sabi Sezen and his and his um, and his friends. Is we still abide by specific laws for a thousand years we did obviously there are exceptions people when they live abroad they tend to sometimes uh, mingle with the um, with the indigenous people however it was um very very small percentage so small that it was an exception that confirmed the rule it doesn't matter if we are in 2023 or if it's 1000 <laughs> bc the rules are the same. This picture looks odd, and it must look odd. It must, it must, um, uh, awake feeling of um, of of um of disdain or um, or um or worry or if you feel uncomfortable, it's good because this is just your natural reaction. Because it's not just because two people are black, boom, you put them together. No, Yahweh is very specific. Because back in the day, I, when the world was made, everybody was like, so what? <laughs> but yet you made big distinctions between son of Set, the sons of Set and the son of Cain, and then the sons of Abraham and everybody else, and then Jacob, and he narrowed down and narrowed down until to this day. So the, how many billions of people are there are in the world? Seven odd billion of people, and of which few millions are his chosen. Because he likes small quantities, you know? He likes to just keep it small. <laughs> he doesn't like to just go on a large scale. Then, of course, salvation is available to everybody. But we're talking about marital laws. If you're marrying outside of your ethnicity, you are breaking a commandment. You are breaking Yahuwah and Yeshua's statutes, and you will have judgment coming upon you. So I put this picture just as a reminder. You know, repetita juvant, like the Latin said. Repetition helps. So if you have a person that has that has ivory blood or what modern people call Jewish but it's wrong because again the, the, it's a term that doesn't doesn't make any sense because it's not biblical but if you have ivory blood so if you are an original son and daughter of Jacob okay and you're marrying somebody that is not ivory then what principality and what power would govern the fate and the, the life of your child? Well, according to the scriptures and how life works, Yahuwah cannot allow ivory principality and powers to govern a mixed child. Because I read a few episodes ago about the the the, the tale of this uh, this uh, child that was born from an ivory woman and an Egyptian man that was cursing the name of Yahuwah and he killed the child on the spot um, because he said this child is a pagan because he's going after the gods of his father so this is like and this is a clear example that why he said if you're marrying outside, you're going after the gods of your father because you are then deprecating and defiling the name of Yahuwah. So that shows that when you have a mixed child, that child will then take on the principalities and power of the non-Ibri parent. 
So these children that here on the picture, clearly they will have the principalities and powers of their pagan father. Um, and so, yes, when there was, there is the, the book of um, Ezra 10, chapter 10, when he's saying that you shall leave your half-breed children behind uh, to come back to Israel, is basically because otherwise how can these principalities govern these people because they're not part of, of the nation? They're not part of the nation. So you see there are very complicated heaven, heaven laws that they govern who we need to marry and how and and when etc because otherwise there will be repercussions on their generations to come because then for the tribunal for the succession of uh, of 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 rights it takes four to seven generations for a for a human to then be regrafted into the ivory nation so it's a very laborious um, process uh, that is not easy. So once you go out, it takes four generations to come back. So for one mistake, it will take four generations to be reaccepted. So it's very, 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 very important to understand that if you engage in these activities, you are technically uh, participating in satanic practices because in the because sat, sat, Satan in Hebrew means an enemy, you are an adversary, you are um, disobeying. So just because you are disobeying with this law, you are automatically engaging in satanic practices. Then of course there are also more outward satanic practices like uh, drinking blood and all of that, but that's, there are levels to transgression, of course. Because in modern society, they teach um, the Bible in the wrong way. They, they only read certain chapters of the New Testament and they disregard the Old Testament because the Old Testament is telling to 99% of the world population, you're doing it wrong. And so people don't want to hear that their children are, 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 uh, are unwanted and then that they are outside of the plan of Yahuwah. But these are not things that I have postulated. These are criteria set by the Bible itself. Yahweh has wiped off the entire earth because people were mixing among different nations, different breeds, different things. And then he said, this is the first and the last time that I will do it, even though I will be angered and I will not do it anymore in, by water. But then he's going to bring destruction by fire for purifying. So that's why there is going to be the last war, Armageddon, because he wants to purify earth by fire. Because he didn't work by water first, because water is uh, the first uh, solvent in the periodic table. Because water is the first cleaning element. Because it's the first acid, then the more H, the more hydrogen you have, the more acidic it is. It didn't work to cleanse, so it's going to bring fire to destroy everything and to have perfect perfection everlasting at the end. So it seems that only fire can bring perfection because um, you need to really destroy everything to then bring back, bring the concept that he had in mind to begin with. A different ethnicity, a different race, a different species, you're going against the will of Yah. Yah doesn't like mixing, doesn't like inbreds, doesn't like bastards. He doesn't. He wants everyone to keep it on his own. Every classification, every animal, every beast, every plant, every human. So, there are a lot of people who are Tutsi and they're like, and actually what Tutsi? Because um, Tutsi now has a connotation of weakness. We are not weak. We are what Tutsi. Um, they're discouraged. They're like, oh my gosh, we, our numbers are decreasing. 
they, there are so many mixed people and there are so many Hutus on this, on this planet. But guess what? It's not about the numbers. Yahweh has, has chosen a, a very small people, a, small, a community as his own, right? And again, all of these people that they choose to marry out and their children are not part of the covenant, then there is more for us. We, we don't need to then share our, our inheritance with, uh, with these folks, you know? There is more for us. That, that's, uh, that's the point. There is more for us. I don't understand why people would want to downgrade and uh, marry a Philistine. It's disgusting. But again, a lot of these people are from the cult of Nyambingi. They are low tier. You see, because there are classes even within Tutsi. You know, see, there are levels of Tutsi. Not like everyone <laughs> is the same. Some of them are really bottom low tier that they worship Nyambingi and they then they mingle among among these uh, these beasts and it's fine we will leave them behind you know so don't cry about it everyone has at least one family member that has decided to marry the trash and uh, what you need to do is just to leave them behind the same way we used to do at the time of Sabisese Sabi says, as you remember what he said, we should never take wives or husbands among these indigenous people. The same way was written in Genesis that we are not allowed to marry the people of the land. We should only marry among each other. And then you're asking yourself why there are so many calamities in your life and your life is trash. If you marry trash, trash is in your life. Your children are trash, you know. It's sad, but that's your choice. Nobody told you or forced you to marry trash. Yeah. How can you marry trash and expect your child to be good? It's not logical. Yeah? Yeah, we're written in so many verses. It said, they're trash. For instance, in the book of Enoch, chapter 10, in verses 9, through the works that they were taught by Azazel to him ascribe all sin and to Gabriel said to Lord proceed against the bastards and the reprobates and against the children of fornication and destroy the children of fornication the children of the watchers from amongst men you see he doesn't like mixing of creation from a macro perspective of um, entities like angels with, with humans and also on a micro, micro scale of different nations mingling because each nation has its own, like I said, power and principality governing in them and deciding the fate. Pagan nations have evil principalities. Only the chosen people or nations who have repented or are following the will of Yah have good principalities and powers. When a person denies uh, um, his affiliation to Yahuwah or denies Yahshua, then of course, then he is, he is rebuked and, and he's revoked his birthright and is then assigned to, um, a pagan um, principality. And the same way, if a person repents and is saying, um, Yahweh, forgive my forefathers for their paganism. I want to be grafted in into your forgiveness, into your nation. Then you become spiritually ivory because you follow Yahshua. But still, you are not ivory in the flesh. So you're not allowed to marry within the ivory community. It's very specific. 
Because a lot of people think that mess- being messianic is like being Christian. No, Christianity is is they 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 are promoting interracial interethnic um, uh, marriages, which goes against Torah. And if you say that you believe in Yeshua, Yeshua was an ivory. Do you think Yeshua was was promoting interracial marriage? That was eating pork and beer. Yeshua was doing none of that. None of that. None of that. Do you think that his he his disciples or 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 John the Baptist was the product of some? Unholy union like that? No. Yahweh has, has chosen a virgin from the ivory nation, from the lineage of Judah, to bring forth his, the word that became flesh. He didn't take a Philistine. He didn't take, um, a Babylonian. He didn't take a Roman. He didn't take a Greek woman. None of that. He chose an ivory woman from the lineage of Jacob. So if you are the sons of Jacob, and you are putting your your blood into a foreign blood uh, blood pool, then you cannot come into the same congregation. You become unclean. In the Bible, there are so many verses about cleanness, physical cleanness and mental cleanness, spiritual cleanness, water and blood are repeated thousands of times in the Bible about clean, clean, about, about cleanse, spiritual cleanse and keeping your blood clean. Because your blood is the recognition symbol to see for him if you have, if you have the permission to come back to Israel. Why they say the blood of Yeshua covers you, the blood of Yeshua gives you, um, uh, gives you eternal life, gives you pardon. Because it can cover the people who don't have ivory blood. So you become spiritually ivory, but still your DNA is not ivory. But you will have a symbol on top of your head for Yahuwah to recognize you. You see, it's like you are adopted. But if you are an adopted child, you cannot expect the same privileges as a blood child. And you say, oh my gosh, it's so unfair. But listen, Yahuwah is always making distinction between his, his favorite children and his, you know, the other nations. Unfortunately or fortunately, Yahuwah makes, is a meritocratic yeah, Elohim. But also makes favoritism because he said, "You are my chosen people." I didn't say that. Yes, Yahuwah said that because he has to choose between. He has to cut for himself a people that he can govern, because the other nations are pagan. He's cutting a, a a portion for himself alone. Am I saying that every ivory person is good? Every ivory person goes to heaven? No, there are a lot of ivory people that they have chosen to reject their privilege and their birthright, and they are now pagan or married to pagan people, and their children are not ivory. And then they cry later, when it's too late. (laughs) Don't they, though? Don't they all? It is quite interesting, though, that in Genesis 6, they make uh, uh, the, the portion when they say uh, that the, the, the daughters of men were fair. Fair is the wrong uh, adjective, because in English, fair literally means pale, fair-skinned. While in Hebrew, it just says beautiful, but because in ancient English culture, fairness and beauty were synonymous because if you are a fair woman then you are more beautiful because you are angelic it means you are closer to nafalim um while in um in ivory culture is the contrary the dark, if you are dark then you are human you are ivory and then you are more beautiful 
obviously things standards of beauty have changed because now people are are made to believe that not having melanin which is a protection against the sun is actually a good thing which is crazy um because they need to put sunscreen and all it, it, it's it's too problematic melanin is a gift from yahua you need to cherish it but not every person that has melanin is ivory like i said in the bible you can tell that the ivory nation is very small people ha hate them and they need to just go and travel a lot they every time something happens a calamity and they just need to leave sounds familiar right to my lovely what to see of the world you know what i'm talking about <laughs> you just know um because we as watusi we are not allowed to to celebrate our um ivory roots or if for modern people who don't understand what the term means jewish roots um you are condemned for it which is very anti-semitic but they say we are divisive only because we are celebrating our forefathers is insane so they said that we just need to forget about um you know our roots are 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 are, are, are Elohim, and that we need to conform and we need to shut up and disappear this is basically what they're telling us on a daily basis and it's wrong you need to cherish your roots you need to be blessing Yahweh every day that you are born this way and you're asking but when can we go back to the homeland we need to wait at the Yeshua comes this has been the uh, you know the pact that he made with Abraham first, Isaac, Jacob, and all the other generation, and then at the year 1000, when he had to, we had to move, get out, and um, and this was told to Sabizes as well, to maintain the, our covenant, to keep it alive, even if we were living in the jungle, to keep it alive, to keep it well. And, yeah, we tried. And we were doing fine until, you know, what, what happened. But this is for another episode for sure because it will take too long, anyways. <laughs> I always, I always, I, I always um, mention it because it's because it's cool. And the son of God saw the daughters of men, which is in Genesis 6, and they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with men, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be in a hundred and twenty years, which we established when we read Jubilee. That he put a new lock on the DNA before we humans used to live nine hundred years even. Now he's putting a limit to 120 to decrease the <laughs> chances of sin. There were giants in the earth in those days and also after that, you see. He's confirming that even if he's wiping off all the, all the, all the corruption, the, the seed of evil entered the ark, as I mentioned earlier. And when the sons of God came unto the daughters of men, they bare children to them. The same became mighty men, which were all of old, men of renown. Men of renown, you need to think about uh, Hercules, Ach Achilles, half human and half demigod, and half god. So demigods. Demigod is this half breed that has a uh, mighty power from the angels uh, mighty strength velocity and also they are invictus they are not immortal because they can die eventually they have always a weak spot but they are e e very difficult to kill and he repented the lord that he had made man on the earth and he grieved him in his in his heart I can imagine. Oh, sorry, I had the verse before. When the sons of God came into the daughters of men and they bear, yeah, that's, I, I can read it. 
And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and every imagination of thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Can you imagine how you can be evil constantly? It's incredibly <laughs> disgusting. And he repented the Lord that he made man on the earth, and he graved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping thing and the fowl of the earth, for he repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. And Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth was also, was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupt his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Rooms shalt thou make it in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without with peach. So basically to make it waterproof and to make sure that water was not infiltrating and also to make it smoother for, for, um, for basically, uh, uh, for the journey in water, you know, cause obviously there's viscosity, so it's easier to navigate. And this is the fashion which thou shall make it of the length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, the breadth of the 50 cubits, and the height of it 30 cubits. A window shall thou make to the ark, and a cubit shall thou finish it above, and the door of the ark shall thou set in the side thereof, with the lower second and the third stories shall thou make it. So everything is dictated. The size, the door, the windows, how many floors, of this uh, gigantic boat, you know, think about a cruise ship, you know, <laughs> this is not the Titanic, okay, and behold, I have even, uh, I do bring a flood of, of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh wherein is is the breath of life from under in heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. But with thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy sons' wives with thee. And and of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort shall uh, thou bring into the ark to keep them alive in thee. With thee, they shall be male and female, male and female, non-transgender, homosexual, and all of that. No, male and female. Two men cannot have a child. They can't. That's why they need to have a surrogate. You are negating truth. If to if if homosexual people were supposed to get married, why are they not able? to produce children within themselves without the help of a woman. Women, why are you participating in the in delirium? Why are you allowing homosexuals to have children? You shouldn't rent your womb and uh, allow their seed to be in, in you and give birth to a child to then give it to them, to be probably molested. Or, or whatever they, they, these homosexuals do to children. You see? Because the root of everything evil is pedophilia. We read in the, in the second book of uh, Adam and Eve and the apocalypse of Moses how the children of Canaan were raping the, the children of the neighbors in front of them. So, and again, s- studies and also because I, I also conducted some interviews to people. They obviously don't, don't want to be mentioned. They want to be anonymous. And that they are homosexuals. They confirmed that they were molested when they were children by an homosexual person. So, you see, it's a vicious cycle. It's a vicious cycle indeed. Do all homosexual people find children attractive? No, but they were molested when they were children. But a good 70% of them will eventually interact with a child or a minor. It gets very sticky. It gets very, very sticky. Yeah? 
And again, we, when we will look about Sodom and Gomorrah, we will see the story of how the men of, of, of Sodom were so uh, evil and twisted that they wanted to rape angels. You see? And uh, so part of these uh, of this disease there is also rape. Most of the people that they uh, rape, they have been raped themselves and within the same sex. That's how you build um, um, a rapist. Because when they do it, they think it's not normal or it's not wrong. The rapists have been raped when they were children by another man or a woman, etc. To then um, train them to do the same to others. You see? So, yeah. Um, it's not uncommon that they you are injecting violence into people. Uh, if you think about even like documentaries about serial killers, when they are like a rapist or things like that, then in their uh, family history, you will find out they were victim of, of uh, sexual abuse when they were children. So it's all part of the same uh, satanic training, you see. The, about inflicting pain because they learned it from the fallen angels. Fallen angels had taught humankind how to rape and what's the purpose of rape and what gates are open uh, when such things are done, what chemicals are produced in the blood and um, and other things, you see. So, yeah, but we'll look about those things when we talk about Sodom and Gomorrah because it's a very complex and dark topic. Yeah, like this is not even dark enough. <laughs> and take thou unto thee of all food that is eaten, and thou shalt gather it to thee, and it shall be for food for thee and for them. Thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him, so did he. Well, that was fantastic as we have seen. This episode was like a summary of all the last three. Um, just condensed and it was very important also to go through what is canonical scripture, consider canonical scripture, Genesis. Because when you read Genesis on your own, yeah, you might have an idea, but then everything we read before was so detailed in Jubilees, Jasher, Enoch, really, really gave the idea of what this is all about. We read that the angels had taught humankind about witchcraft, uh, um, the uh, makeup industry and uh, weapon industry, uh, mischievous uh, violence, uh, rage. Uh, we even saw the the Coachella concert type of thing uh, in the Testament of Adam. So many incredible detailed depiction of what the world was then and how the world is now about the butchery um, and uh, perversion, sexual immorality, all of these things that they uh, they uh, make the enemy happy and Yahweh upset. We saw how Genesis 6 is about the hijacking of the human DNA by breeding and how this is translated in modern uh, human history when where you have certain race races and population who want to wipe out others by the the, the same mechanism of hijacking the womb and the and the DNA of what they perceive as unwanted population interfering with what it is, the makeup of what the world in Yahweh's eyes should have looked like. Yahweh is a, is a Elohim of order. If he created a world with a lot of sun, he wanted most of the human population to be melanated so they were protected against radiation. Um... While now we are made to believe that people without protection are somewhat superior, but what they perceive as superiority is because they have angel blood in them. And, 
and and they have access to certain technology given by the angels, not knowing, or maybe they know, but they don't care that this technology was simply stolen after the the fall from grace. Before falling, these angels had took some of these devices with them before they saw the women that they were beautiful and uh, taking them against their will, against the Yahweh's will. And the Lord said he would destroy everything which was upon the earth for men and cattle and beasts and fowl of the earth and which moveth on the earth. And we know that. And Noah made the ark in all respects as he commanded him in the 27th jubilee of the year in the fifth week in the fifth year on the new moon of the first month. And he entered in the sixth year thereof, in the second month of the new moon of the second month till the sixteenth, and he entered in that we brought to him into the ark. And the Lord closed it from uh, without and on the seventeenth evening. And the Lord opened seven flood gates of heaven. So he opened the gates again, because you have the waters above the... Um, the dome but those waters are hold back and so you need to open the gates to then um, uh, reverse them in, in through the firmament okay began to pour down water from the heaven 40 days and 40 nights and the fountains of the deep also sent up waters until the whole world was full of water and the waters increased upon the earth. Fifteen cubits did the water rise above all the high mountains. Can you believe that the whole earth was completely covered and it was even over uh, 15 cubits over the, the peak of mountains? That's why you have fossils of fish and, uh, and, um, and, uh, crustaceans on top of uh, the Alps because water was even over them. You see, those are proofs of the flood of the world, because how can you find fish on top of mountains? And we're talking about millions of fossils, you see? And actually, some mountains, they're shaped like sleeping giants, because most of these giants, when they died, and then um, they went through, instead of the decomposition, they went to a fossilization. And so their tissue transformed into calcium and then from calcium to rocks. And, and that's why sometimes you see also mountains shaped like trunks of, of, of trees. Uh, because at that time, trees were so huge uh, because, again, of the um, manipulation of DNA. Again, if you also see Alien Covenant, another movie, it gives you the idea that these, um, these artificial, uh, biological weapon that basically attaches to every living organism to create, um, their mutation can also affect, uh, the, 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 the flora, plants, and, this will then explain the disproportionate uh, size of certain um, of certain uh, trees that they are humongous um, so they have basically a mutation in the growth factor instead of stopping it just keeps going and going and so these uh, trees actually um, they are creating um, um, insulated environments in a way um, if you think about even the jungles when there are these huge huge trees and in the deep forest it's like a different type of of environment different type of temperature because of the density of water particles and and precipitation <laughs> so uh, and the ark was lifted up above the water, uh, above the earth, sorry, and he moved upon the face of the waters. And the water prevailed on the face of the earth five months, 150 days. And the ark went and rested on the top of Lubar, one of the mountains of Aratar. 
And on the new moon in the fourth month, the fountains of the great deep were closed, and the floodgates of heaven were restrained. And on the new moon of the seventh month, all the months uh, of the abysses of the earth were opened. Mouths, yeah. And the water began to descend into the deep below. So basically, to recreate homeostasis, we needed to expel the excess water. You see, because it cannot, the sun cannot dry out all of these, all of these cubits and billions of liters of water. So the only way to expel it was to actually use the gates for the, um, for the abyss. Because you know, in the model of flat earth, you have waters above the dome, then you have the crust of the earth, then you have the abyss, and then underneath you have the waters below. So basically open the gates um, to then exceed the abyss and then went into the waters below. And on the new moon of the 10th month, the tops of the mountains were seen. The new moon of the first month of the earth became visible. And the waters disappeared from above the earth in the fifth week, in the seventh year thereof. On the seventh day, in the second month, of the, th the earth was dry. And on the twentieth, seventh thereof, he opened the ark and the seventh and the sent forth from it beasts, cattle, birds, and every moving thing. So it's beautiful that he created uh, this ark um, to um, basically uh, repopulate the earth with the same classes of animals and, uh, and probably a catalog of plants of bef that there was before the flood to um, maintain his uh, ideal creation. If you think about every time there is like an apocalyptic movie, uh, Western civilizations, they have this um, desire, this um, uh, fantasy of, of, of taking a spaceship and going to a new world to repopulate it. And they have a catalog of all living things to repopulate in the same image as the original Earth. They always have this um, fantasy of escaping earth, escaping death, escaping judgment, and uh, rebuilding it. Because this is like a dream that was sold to them by their fathers, the fallen angels, saying, do not worry, when apocalypse come, and the Ashur will come back with the, <clears throat> with the army to destroy do not worry, you, my children, will you, we will just go into another place and create it in our own image. This is like a lie that the devil have told them. Because you cannot breach the dome. Because after the dome, there is water. And then after the water, there is like the heaven court. But you are not able to even enter because the cherubims will just shoot you on the spot. They will open their lion lion mouths and just spread fire out of it. And you will die instantly. So you will not even reach. But again, the, you cannot even reach the dome because uh, you cannot pierce it. They tried it many times, so it doesn't work. The only way to get through it is by permission. Um, and it's uh, going through certain channels on the mountains. And then Yahweh can dr drag you up. That's why there is the, the so-called raptures, that which one day I will talk about, which is incredible. <clears throat> so there is no way that you can go away and escape judgment. If you are human, or at least 90% human, whatever your um, uh, your outlook is, you need to just stay here, wait for judgment, and then if you're worthy, you know, you will have eternal life. Or you will simply go to hell, depending on your situation. So all of this idea is coming from the scriptures of um, the earth is destroyed, and then a new beginning by keeping the same species, etc., but their fantasy is to escape Earth because they know that if they stay here, their end is, is certain. But this is a fantasy because there is no other place to go. There is no other place to go. Because the other alternative is heaven, but you cannot go there unless you're invited. So, <laughs> what's up? <laughs> 
because a lot of people they try to create um, interdimensional uh, circuits to then is, uh, bypass physical obstacles and go into the other into the other side. Problem is that you don't have uh, the um, the the wave capacity or the the correct um, uh, uh, it's like a radio station. You don't have the correct channel to reach there. The only place you will go is is not a nice one. Is where basically uh, the uh, the demons or the minions of the fallen angels like to go. Um, they like to go into those dark uh, dimensional places and then come back here only if they have to because they don't like to be here because of the sun radiation and the fact they are always, always watching, etc. So they like to go into hide. And that's why they made that series, Stranger Things, about trying to get to that frequency and open those channels to bring those entities in, in, in this dimension to be able to see them. Because most of the time you're not able to see them, although maybe sometimes they are here. But again, because of our eyes, they have changed once we came here. I told you that our eyes were different. Um, the electrical um, um, uh, photo, basically photo uh, translation of images was different when we were in heaven. Adam and Eve were able to see every frequency, every every color and uh, every sound the same way the animals can now instead we are impaired we are half blind and half deaf to certain things and only when you are engaging into really dark practices then you can see them or they can have um, dominion in your life that they move things or you can actually see them if you, if you live a nice normal life you're not able to see them even if they're around you uh, because again they don't like to be on a visible human scale because it's um i guess it's maybe physically or or spiritually painful for them so it's easier if humans go to their um to their uh dimension that's why witches they entertain certain practices so they can uh, they're able to see them hear them and access their um, their knowledge you see so that's why you're not supposed to take drugs you're not supposed to um, get yourself into um, alcohol state otherwise you start to see things that you're not supposed to and then you're starting to engage with these entities. Um, yeah, it's very sad. So it's very important to keep yourself out of those scenarios. Yeah, you might be scared now, but I hope you are. <laughs> I hope you are scared. Because <laughs> if you're scared, you, that is probably... Um, um, <laughs> there is some hope for you. <laughs> and plus, in this time, there were also strange creatures like... Um, uh, the dinosaurs, which I spoke about the other time, and again, it's not difficult to build by dinosaurs. You can just have a reptile or any animal and inbreed them and then um, uh, just um, uh, deactivate the regulation of growth and then they become gigantic. It's easy stuff. They even made the movie about uh, the uh, Jurassic World or something we, about um, genetic manipulation and different um, achieving different sizes of of um, of monsters. 
Yeah, it's not very difficult if you think about that. And I think in the book of Jasher, there is also um, uh, a creature that for me sounds like 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 Pegasus, uh, a horse with with uh, with wings. And um, I can probably read it for you. And it's in chapter 3 of Jasher. And at that time, the sons of men were with Enoch, and Enoch was speaking to them, and they lifted up their eyes, and the likeness of a great horse descended from heaven and the horse pace in the air so as you can see pegasus is um, was the idea of pegasus was stolen from uh, from uh, from biblical uh, tradition And it was probably like a um, personal or very uh, common animal at the court of, en of heaven for transportation. Because, of course, uh, there are clouds every everywhere, so easier for the Yahweh to go from one place to the other. In Joshua chapter 4, then, we know how they created monsters by inbreeding. Uh, and inbreeding is because they wanted to make Yahweh upset. Because in verse 18, they say, And their judges and rules went to the daughters of men and took their wives by force from their husbands according to their choice. And the sons of men into those days took from the cattle of the earth, the beasts, the field, and the fowls of the earth, and taught the mixture of animals of one species with another in order their way to provoke the Lord. And the God saw the whole earth was corrupt, for all flesh were corrupt itself, uh, way uh, upon the earth, all men and all animals, which we read yesterday. And I think it's very telling. Every time that you are uh, mixing different different livestock or different species, Yahweh hates it. Because he created those pieces in perfection. And Noah, the son of Lamech, in, then in uh, chapter 5, says, Refrain taking a wife in the, those days to beget children. For he said, Surely now God will destroy the earth. Wherefore then shall I beget children? It's like, why should I have children when he's destroying everything? And Noah was a just man. He was perfect in his generation. And the Lord chose him to raise up seed from his seed upon the face of the earth. And the Lord said unto Noah, Take unto thee a wife and beget children, for I have seen the righteous before me in the generation. When Noah went and took a wife, and he chose now the daughter of Enoch, and she was 508 years old. So, <laughs> a very young lady. <laughs> And Noah was 498 years old when he took Nam for a wife. So basically she was a cougar. <laughs> and on verse 25, the, and it was after this that the Lord said to Noah, The end of all flesh is come before, uh, before me on account of their evil deeds. And behold, I will destroy the earth. It's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. <sighs> but then you will say, oh, but these are the apocryphal. Um, 
why should I believe all of these things about angels impregnating women and uh, the alien deception and uh, monsters and chimeras, Pegaso, and all of that? Don't worry. I got you. We can read Genesis 6. And in Genesis 6 is what is basically the summary of all the things that we read. Because all of these books were in the Bible once upon a time to provide context, to provide in-depth information. So now you understand why there is so much um, uh, focus on aliens or supernatural into movies uh, because they are basically depiction of Jubilee, Book of Jasher, Book of Enoch, first, second Adam and Eve, life and Adam and Eve. They're all about Genesis. All the movies are either about Genesis or Revelation, the apocalypse, because those are the focus point to understand. They are the key for uh, uh, for eternal life. And that's why people love those kind of movies, because they are drawn to it, because they understand there is truth and lies, because, of course, they're not able to tell you everything that is going on otherwise how can they keep you in the in the in the loop so you need to when you're watching those things use the sermon and try to be distant as much as you can but bottom line people love those things a lot of people they they pretend they don't they don't believe it because they're scared of it, because they you know that if it's true, that they need to put their life in perspective, they need to prepare for the inevitable. You're either making it or you're not. And making it to heaven is not about being a good person. If it, that was so easy, <laughs> it is a difficult, very difficult process. Very difficult process. Do you think that in the flood that there were no children? That they were wiped away. There were children of men who died in the flood. As well as hybrid monsters. But not just. Not just monsters died. Even what we would consider innocent children died. Because Yahuwah thinks about us differently. Because we are all children in his eyes. Uh, but again, like any father. He has preferences on who he wants uh, by his side and who he doesn't want by his side. Remember, in Genesis is written that there is the seed of man and there is the seed of the devil. So not everybody on this planet is human. Be very, very, very careful. Not everybody is human. Either they are non-human, pretty much they are either... Uh, half breeds or or just uh, plain simple uh, fallen angels or um, uh, or they are monsters who who live in the skies and they have like a synthetic body they they live in in into um, so not everybody is human and those who might have human char- characteristics they might still have um, Angel blood in it, in them. You see? Because at this time, in all of this confusion and in all of this, um, inbreeding, there is also the, com- the apparition of entities that, that we call, uh, Neanderthals. And Australopithecus. You see? It is very clear, even from the picture itself, that Neanderthals, Australopithecus, all of these strange creatures are the product of breeding uh, between uh, the fallen angels and uh, animal species such as the monkeys. And then, um, and then this particular strange creature by mating 
uh, forcefully within human population. And um, it is quite interesting why the Neanderthal DNA is very geographically specific and it's found in only certain populations around the world. And we spoke in the previous video how then uh, the seed of um, of Esau will then completely change the the uh, outlook of of humankind by completely um, changing what a Nephilim used to look like. Because you can imagine an angel mating with a human would have drastic. Um, <laughs> Uh, a drastic look to it, either in height, huge height, like the the the, the heroes of renown, like uh, Hercules and Achilles in strength, and and then imagine also Nephilim uh, created by the mating of angels with animals, so we can think about the um, Minotaur and. The centaurs, all of these half, half creatures, half, uh, half animal, half angel, and then with additional human DNA in the process, like extremely, extremely uh, uh, monstrous creatures. A lot of them were unpleasant to look like, to look. Others might have had more positive outcome, but it was a hit or miss <laughs> type of scenario. So it is very clear that the Neanderthal and the Australopithecus are more simple than what the scientist world wants to make it up to be. It is simply the mixing of DNA within angels, monkeys, and humans. Um, that's why uh, the these creatures look so much like primates, because they were like that <laughs> they were primates there are some primates who are more human like than others let's think about proboscis monkeys for instance the one with the really big nose or um, or let's think about gorillas or chimpanzee and all of that a lot of those creatures were used in these processes and most of them might have not even been like this to begin with because in nature most of the monkeys are small tiny and you know so mo maybe those primates are the leftovers <laughs> let's say of those um, unholy processes you see so yeah things are much simpler than what they make you think to make it seems. I mean, the whole scientific community comes up with this theory is that um, Big Bang, explosion, particles come together, they create complex life out of nowhere. Then a monkey decides one day that he's going to use a utensil. Then the next generation decides that he's going to walk instead of of uh, of uh, of just climbing trees by changing completely his vertebral column, his posture, his fingers. Yeah, sure. And then from that, he's gonna lose hair and make himself clothes. <laughs> and then from that, he's gonna come up with these amazing ideas about making fire, cultivating, building homes. I mean, you can even just speaking up this these ideas they sound completely ridiculous why would a why would an animal go into the process of making his life more difficult why would an animal would want to um progress into a different bone structure and and you see because a human cannot live in nature the way he is he needs to create barriers it needs to create clothes and a place to stay because we were in heaven and then we were in the um you know we were created and then yahuwah 
created Ed, the Eden, which is basically heaven on earth for us to live in a protected ecosystem. Then when we sinned, we were kicked out from the protected ecosystem and we were living in an um, in an abrupt, aggressive world in which we were not able to survive with the uh, equipment that we were given um, but when we left um, when we left heaven basically. So it is um, it is strange to me that the science community thinks that, from monkey is men like boom all of a sudden well because they think that every generation an animal should go through the process of um improving itself well this theory clearly is debunked every day because we see a lot of uh, humans reproducting and having children who clearly are they lack any basic uh, common sense and actually the <laughs> the amount of idiots are are more and more increasing and animals are going extinct and they're not becoming um this mega structure and super intelligent and you know if it was true then you will see an advancement in all species across the board you will have a more um consistent progression while instead they say oh no there was an incredible advancement in in species and then all of a sudden they stopped because they felt they reached perfection um you saw like a pig right you think that a pig has reached perfection and how a pig is or like do you think that that a I don't know, a horse has reached perfection the way it is. Like those animals were created the way they look exactly. They just came about the sa this way because you what intended them to be this way for a particular job. Anything that you see outside of the ordinary was a product of, of, uh, of breeding from either evil humans or fallen angels, point blank and a period. But again, common sense is not common, isn't it? <laughs> All of these creatures about dwarfs, leprechauns, elves, uh, fairies, all of this stuff was created before the flood by mixing of different creatures like uh, flies with human DNA and, um, and uh, all sorts of things all sorts of things. So all of these mythological or folk folkloristic creatures are not in the imaginations. They were, they existed. And again, sometimes they were also recreated in modern times. Uh, so the Neanderthal, every time you think about the Neanderthal, you think about the men in caves. They had limited, limited intelligence, very limited, but they, they were coexisting with normal humans. Coexistence in the sense because humans were created by Yah, and but then all of these other, other in, infiltration were created by the fallen angels to, um, basically inquinate, uh, the genetic pool of what is considered an Homo sapiens. So they, they had limited um, intelligence uh, because, again, they had, they probably were mixed with apes. Then we also have um, Deni Denisovan. Uh, there is another type of Neanderthal, mostly in Asia. Uh, but again, those were, they're not humans. They're not humans. They are mixed with monsters. Uh, with because you see uh, also by their skull, their facial, it's um, <laughs> they're not they're not on, on this side of the fence. Uh, absolutely not.
And again, Neanderthals had a pale skin because they were mixed with the angel blood. That's, it's that simple. Because the absence of melanin is a, is a, is a mutation. And uh, that was brought by the fallen angels into humankind. So there are humans who have that. And they are closely related to the angels. Those who don't have it, they don't, they're not related to angels. It's very easy to understand as a concept. That's why Vikings, when they think about Valhalla, they're talking about their fathers, the, um, the fallen angels. And that's why Hitler really loved uh, Nordic mythology and the Aryan uh, race because he knows the Aryans are closely related to angels and so that's why they were uh, working for reaching the perfect uh, body the perfect Aryan soldier etc because again they do sometimes have um, special uh, special like uh, gifts based on their DNA because it's closely related to uh, angels and so um, that's why they like to dive into um, necromancy divination medium all of that they just love it <laughs> they just love it yeah mm. to build the, the cities of the ancient world um, all of these stories about Atlantis and and ancient te- Egyptian technologies and the Greeks, all of that, we can see that they have corrupted biblical scripture to depict what they believed and perceived as the truth. We saw that Pegasus, who is the winged horse, is an, a biblical animal, but then they took it and then put it into the perspective of pagan religion. Or what about the story of Adam that was made from soil and then Yahuwah breathed life and soul into him? We have in Greek mythology and in also Egyptian mythology, they try to mimic the same, uh, the same event. And then they try to mimic the event of the flood. In the Greek mythology, they talk about the flood. In almost every ancient ancient religion, they talk about the flood because it was such an important moment in history. And why they all have the same story? Because Noah had three sons. So all of these three sons saw the event and they taught these events to their children but then only one of these sons followed Yahuwah's commandment so these are the other two they have been cut off especially Ham Ham that was cursed we will see about Ham and the curse uh, when we uh, when we talk about uh, Noah's drunkenness and all of that but just so you are aware Uh, the um, the children of Ham that uh, they were cursed are then descend they, they their descendants are Canaan and they are meant to serve and they are just cursed people right and um, their curse is everlasting it's not like with the Ibrim Yahuwah has a relationship with uh, with us where, where there is a lot of chastisement so he give us and then takes a, a way so we are blessed and then we are chastised but there is also greatness you know with, with the Canaan instead there is constant everlasting just 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 a, a life of, of just, uh, just 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 horrible we will see that because it's funny, because a lot of the times the people have contradictive uh, attitude towards us. They say that we are disgusting Jews, that we need to die, that we are in Yenze, and all of that, that we need to go back to our homeland. But then they say that we are cursed like Ham. Listen, Ham was a pagan, was a Canaanite. You cannot be a Canaanite and an Ibrim at the same time. <laughs> 
<laughs> but it's just because they want they just pour out hate out of nowhere um we will probably read one time a very interesting paper about anti-semitism and anti-tusism which are basically synonymous because we are because we are eyebrow people the true original ones yeah um and so when the belgians arrived into the land and they recognized us as oh my gosh not only these people are jewish but they're black like the worst combination that you can imagine they installed anti-semitism also among the gohim that we were living peacefully amongst for a thousand years so they trained them into anti-semitism because uh, they brought their anti-semitic sentiment from home um, because there are a lot of like correspondence between uh, the um, the 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 white fathers, right? Back to Rome, and also the colonialists who were saying, "Wow, these people are for sure um, ivory." Uh, because they are identical to the Ethiopian ivory, so basically the Ethiopian Jews, they have the same tradition. They um, they they present their firstborns on the eighth day, and they have one Elohim, and they talk about this story about uh, the first man made from. Uh, from uh, from soil and that he uh, Yahuwah breath in him and that the the son of Yahuwah uh, came back from life after three days. This is basically our the story that we were telling the the ble the white fathers because they were like, "What is your religion?" So we were telling them about this man that was son of Yahuwah that defeated death and came back from life after three days. So they basically had a brain aneurysm because they said, oh my gosh, not only these people are Jewish, but they are also Messianic. So they believe in Yeshua. They need to die. <laughs> so, yeah, literally, that's what, what happened in their brain. So basically, they thought, they would go him, that we were living among, they, they need to hate us, they need to kill us, they need to just get rid of us. And, and yeah, so that's why for me Genesis 6 is so very important because it's a macro scale uh, and, a, and a micro scale, um, uh, uh, basically uh, the population weapon. Because the, the, the aim of, of the devil is to not only defeat humankind, but also to wipe out uh, the chosen people just to um to mock the creator not knowing the creator always has a plan and um so be happy be patient be hopeful because uh, yeshua will come very soon so don't be discouraged about what you hear what you read always pray next time we'll look at noah uh, from a technical point like uh, the um, Basically, the and the architecture, the engineering process of building the ark, how many years it took him, what was what is the structure, what is the size compared to modern ships. Um, we will talk about more about the the voyage, how they carried all those animals, and then we will talk about the curse of Ham, etc. Because the the Belgians. <laughs> <laughs> they they're very confused people because they said that we are disgusting Jews, but then they said that we are cursed like him. But like I said, you cannot be Canaanite and hybrid at the same time. But we'll look at it on another time. So to my what to see family in the world, I love you. Stay prayed up, and to the people who just um just uh, like Bible studies or our uh, Watusi supporters. Thank you for watching. Share if you care. Like and subscribe. And see you next time. Ciao, ciao.